Number 53. A 1 mega ohm voltmeter is placed in parallel with a 75 kilo ohm resistor in a circuit. Draw a circuit diagram. All right. So here, let's just pretend we have a 70. Oh, no, that didn't work out as oh, that didn't really work out as well as I thought. What are you going to do? That looks better. Um, so let's pretend that this resistor here, you know, you can call it R1, whatever. Uh, that's going to be 75 kilo ohms. I'm just going to do all the conversions already. 75 times 10 to the 3 ohms. You know we need that in ohms. This says a voltmeter is placed in parallel with this thing. So what that means is that I'm going to have this apparatus placed in parallel. Put a little V there. Circle it. Put a little V for voltmeter. And basically inside of this voltmeter now, right, we would have a resistance. All right. Now usually what they'll do is they'll show it over here like separate. That's fine. I'm going to show it just kind of on top. It's not technically correct, but um, I like to do it that way. So this is going to be 1 times 10 to the 6th ohms now, because we need that in ohms, right? So this, we'll call it R2. All right. So now it wants, so that that's basically the circuit diagram. Okay, technically speaking, you'd want to take this resistance, like I said, and just kind of plug it in here. To me, that's technically correct, but it almost sounds like, you know, it's going through this resistance, then it's going through the voltmeter's resistance. I don't know. So I just kind of like to put this above it to remind myself that the resistance is basically inside of that voltmeter. Any case, let's take a look at letter B. So what is the resistance of the combination? So they're in parallel, right? So you know that to calculate resistance, total resistance in parallel, it's 1 over RP is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Right? This is just simple at this point of the chapter. So this is just 1 over R1. It doesn't matter. It's called 75 times 10 to the 3, plus, uh, plus then 1 over R2, which is 1 times 10 to the 6th, 1 over RP. Take out the calculator and add those two together. So 1 over 75 times 10 to the 3rd, and then plus 1 divided by 1 times 10 to the minus, oh, no, times 10 to the 6th. So we get a very small value, right? 1.43 times 10 to the minus 5th. But then this is 1 over RP, so what you basically have to do is take the reciprocal of this side and take the reciprocal of that side. So RP then becomes 1 over this number. All right, and just plug that into the calculator then. It's going to be 1 divided by that value, 1.43 times 10 to the minus 5th. And you get an answer here of about 6.98, I guess. 6.98, considering rounding, times 10 to the 4th. All right, and that's in terms of ohms now. All right. So that's the total resistance in parallel. Um, all right, so let us see now. It says, uh, if the voltage across the combination is kept the same as it was across a 75 kilo ohm resistor alone, what percent increase, what is the percent increase in the current? All right, so uh, let's just keep this. So this is, no, I don't want to take a screenshot. Um, let's move this value on over there, okay? So that's going to represent the total resistance in parallel, right? So the key thing is they're telling us that the uh, voltage is kept the same. So in other words, I'm going to say the voltage alone must equal the voltage in parallel of these two resistances, okay? So that means that the current alone times the resistance alone, uh, the reason why, um, because remember Ohm's law is V is equal to IR, right? That's all I'm using. I'm using Ohm's law as a substitution there is then going to equal the uh, current in parallel multiplied by the resistance in parallel, all right? Now, uh, what they want us to find here is, uh, well, you're going to have to find like a ratio because it's asking, you know, what percent increase, what is the percent increase in the current? So in other words, um, what we can do here, percent increase in the current, so I would say that uh, percent increase in the current. So what we should do is we should solve for then... Uh, yeah, why don't we solve for R, we, we should be solving for RP over I, RP, no, IP over RA. In other words, if I divide this on over down here, and then I'm going to, because I want to isolate that fraction, I'll divide that on down. What I realize here is now I have a proportion, right? And uh, what this proportion is telling me now is it's saying that IP divided by IA Right? In other words, the current in parallel divided by the current alone, 
will equal now this simple ratio of the resistance alone divided by the resistance in parallel. So this gives me now the, it doesn't tell me the percent, but it'll tell me the fractional increase. Okay, so why don't we calculate and let's see what happens. All right, so the resistance alone was just the 75 times 10 to the 3. All right, so yep, 75 times 10 to the uh, 3. Then divided by the resistance in parallel now, which is 6.98 times 10 to the 4th is equal to IP over IA. And let's see what that works out to be. All right, so 75 times 10 to the third, divided by then 6.98 times 10 to the fourth. And here we go. We get a value about 1.075. Now, this is how many times it has increased, okay? This is how many times, but they wanted a percent, right? So pretend I gave you two values. Pretend I gave you 130. Let's say you ended with $130 and you started with $100. If you were to find the ratio between these two, it'd be 1.3, right? I could also ask you, uh, so that's their fractional ratio. If I were to ask you what percent increase is $130 over 100, you would say, oh, well, 30%. Simple. The question is though, how do I go from this fraction to 30%? All you simply have to do is subtract one from it. Just subtract one. Right? Just subtract 1 and then multiply it by 100. In other words, if you took 1.3, subtracted it by 1, and then multiplied it by 100, guess what you get? 30% now. Okay, You can always use that technique whenever you're talking about fractional changes. So if I know this 1.075 represents the fractional change, all I need to do then in order to find the percent change now is simply uh, subtract 1 from it and multiply it by 100, and you'll notice right? 7.5% gets spit out. Okay. So that's the answer to letter uh, C, not, well, yeah, that was B up here. And this is now letter C down here. All right. Or, or I don't even remember what I did. I guess this whole thing's letter C. I don't know. It was like five minutes ago. I can't remember. Um, so letter D, if the current through the combination is kept the same as it was through the 75 kilo ohm resistor alone, uh, what is the percent decrease now in the, in the voltage? All right, so now we gotta erase this. All right, so now what they're saying is that uh, the current is the same. All right, and um, all right, so how, uh, okay. So let's start with the same idea. So the current here alone is gonna equal the current um, in parallel. And again, using Ohm's law, right, we can just simply do a substitution in here. This means that the voltage alone divided then by the resistance alone should equal then the voltage um, in parallel divided then by the resistance in parallel. And they're asking us then, what is the percent decrease in the voltage? So uh, again, they're, they're, the relation is they're talking about VP or the, uh, the voltage in the parallel arrangement divided by then the voltage alone, right? That's how they're kind of comparing them. So or at least that's how the wording sounds. That's what it sounds like to me. So here's what we're gonna have. So now all I need to do is take my resistance in parallel. Notice how they switched, right? This now becomes a 6.98 times 10 to the minus fourth, all then divided now by seven, uh, 75 times 10 to the third, okay? And then this will equal now VP over VA. So let's find that fractional change. So 6.98 times 10 to the minus, well, let me use that exact value from before, 6 point, basically 9768, a uh, 67, I mean. All right, and then divide it then by the 75 times 10 to the third. So I'm gonna get nine, okay. So this is 0 0.93, uh, 0 0.93, I guess 0, 02 if you want, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is VP over now VA, all right? Now this represents the fractional change, okay? But how do you now find the percentage change? Well, instead of using now whenever your fraction is larger than one, okay, like we had over here, you subtract one from it. You subtract one from the larger ratio. But now if this is less than one, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one and subtract now this ratio from it, 0 0.9302 and then just multiply that by 100 
to get it into the percent. Okay, so one minus that value, bada bing, bada boom, times 100. And it works out to be about 6.9, yeah, 6.98%. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, are the changes found in parts A and C and D significant? Eh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, is 7% different, 6% significant? I'm not really sure. Depends on what you mean by significant. So, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Appreciate it, and I will see you soon. Take care.